Okay, so we've got Andy Curran here at uh, MontrealRocks.ca. Um, get into Andy and um, everything he's done and uh, probably the one thing he hasn't done. Um, before we get to that, uh, I'd just like to thank Steve Gerard of Montreal Rocks. He's allowing me to uh, plug. Um, I'll be uh, going live with my own personal website, www.BorderCityRockTalk.ca on Friday. And um, I will be interviewing Dee Snyder on Friday. And um, just like to thank Tony Cavalier here in the Sioux Captive Studios to make for making this happen. He's built my website that's Captive with a K, two P's. And um, yeah, are you? A, I know you're a hockey fan there, Andy. Um, are you a football in Europe or a soccer fan here in North America? Big game yesterday. Sorry, buddy, you just froze there on me. But um, I, I, it it sounded like you you said you're in the Sioux. Are you in Sault Ste. Marie? I am in Sault Ste. Marie. Excellent. Have some good memories of playing a couple venues there. Um, I've got a funny story about that that I can tell you. But what was your question there about, uh, were you talking about hockey? Well, no, I was saying, I know you're a hockey fan, especially the Blackhawks. Uh, we'll get to that. But um, yesterday was a big day. And um, the guy that built my website, uh, his family runs for Tellies and Giovanni's here in the Sioux, obviously Italian family. And there was a big soccer presence or football, if you're Europe European, yes. um, at their venues. And I'm just curious if you're a, a fan of that sport. It was a big game yesterday, Italy and uh, um, England. England. Yeah. yeah. Um, listen, my dad, uh, my parents are from uh, born and raised in England. And so um, we watched a lot of soccer growing up and, um, I have to tell you that was uh, quite the game, and and to to lose it in the shootout there was um, was heartbreaking for for England. And um, but I know that they, we've got a big uh, Italian community here in Toronto, so my my guess is the uh, streets were going crazy here yesterday. But that was a fun game to watch. Yeah, I think they go on to play. Uh, Italy goes on to play Nigeria. They just beat the U.S. Uh, what? What? Oh no, that's that's basketball. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, it was a big day for soccer and football and everything. So, um, yeah, we've got Andy Curran here. Um, Coney Hatch, Caramel, uh, Leisure World. Um, he's doing some interesting stuff here with uh, another legend in the industry. We'll get into that in a few moments. Um, uh, producer. I mean, what have you not, what have you done? Uh, you've done everything besides um, my phone going off here. That's pretty yeah. professional. You've done everything except uh, run uh, Scott Cook's hair scare on Saturday nights here in Sioux, Michigan. Uh, what, what motivates you? Well, listen, I, um, we started with hockey, and I got to be honest with you. Like every Canadian kid growing up, I, I wanted to be in the NHL. But the, but when the when when the players and the guys around me started getting bigger and faster. <laughs> At the core of me is a guy who loves to listen to new music all the time, um, loves to discover new artists. Uh, there's there's very few styles that I don't like, um, so I'm all over the map, and I think that's sort of the producer in me that loves yeah. creating music or, or listening to other styles, but... Um, no, I've, I've had a pretty lucky run, Ernest, you know, like, you know, as uh, I'm certainly still performing, still composing, um, coming up on close to 40 years, but spent a lot of time on the on the other side of the desk too, working um, with Anthem Records and the management company there. So um, yeah, I've covered a lot of territory and I consider myself pretty lucky. Yeah, for sure. Um, we froze on this end too, so there's going to be a little bit of cutting and pasting, but we'll we'll make it look good and we'll touch up. Uh, I didn't have much time to put my face on, to be honest with you, Andy, today, so. <laughs> that's okay, but that's okay. Me, me too. And honestly, if it's unworkable, Ernest, you know, we can go back and, and I can do another one with you because yeah. it's showing that my inter internet's pretty unstable here in Toronto as well. Okay, well, we'll figure it out. Um, but anyway, so um, El Camo. El Malcombo, you guys did that show last year. I remember uh, Chip getting a hold of me um, to push that, and uh, it was a great show with streaming. And uh, so, how did it feel to get back there after what, what was it? How many years was it since you played there? Decades. Uh, 
Yeah, it was. And we originally played the Elma Combo in 1983. So right around the time of our second record. And, um, you know, it was uh, obviously it's got such great legacy, that club. Um, you know, everybody from the Rolling Stones to the Ramones, Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, Judas Priest played there. My God, the, 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 the list just goes on and on. Not just rock bands, too, you know. Um, yeah. Jacko Pistori is the bass player from Weather Report, played there. Lots of... Um, you know, Gilda Radner and some of the folks from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, they they actually performed in a comedy like troupe there. Yeah. So, so such great, rich um, history at the at the venue. And then when the new owner asked Coney to come back, um, it was pretty much in the middle of the pandemic. But yeah. we could have we performed to fifty people that night, so it felt a little strange. But the club yeah. is so so small and intimate, right? Yeah. Um, so it it felt really good to answer your question, Ernest, and yeah. and. We uh, got a really good recording of it and a good video feed, and we did a deal with um, with Michael Weckerly, the owner, that that we could release it on a bootleg type of a format. So yeah. we, we pressed up about three hundred copies of it, and yeah. um, as of uh, as of last week, I heard almost all of them were gone. So I guess um, I guess guess there was some interest out there for it, you know. Well, maybe people are. Um... Uh, actually, uh, I'll, I digress. I want to get into something exciting in a second here. But another exciting thing is um, you're cleaning out your basement, I hear, uh, doing some spring cleaning and you found some old tapes. Tell us about that and uh, what you're doing with those. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure like a lot of guys out there, their wives are going, do you really need that? Do you really need that box? You know, and yeah. cleaning up the man cave. So, you know, I I had known that I had the master tapes for Leisure World and Caramel for quite some time. Yeah. Um, and it was just a little bit of uh, a laziness on my part to try to to get them up on, on uh, Apple and Spotify and Amazon. And a lot of my friends and my brothers, I've got three brothers that just kept, kept saying to me, when when are you going to do that? So I got up my ass during COVID, worked with a really cool company in Nashville called um, Symphonic Distribution, and yep. co collected all of those um, all of those records together. And I worked with a guy um, by the name of Harry Hess. Harry used to be in a band called Harem Scarum. Yes. And, He's a really good mastering engineer here in Toronto. So we compiled them all together. We did some mastering and put them all up. And you know what? It was a nice, it was a nice bit of closure for me to those records are really hard to find. And yeah. both of those, both of those deals kind of came and went, and the record companies went bankrupt fairly quickly or got gobbled up by Universal. So yeah. you could never find those records anywhere. So I wanted to get them out and share them with people. So, and I'm and particularly proud of the Leisure World record. I, I think it might be the, maybe the my favorite record that I've ever been involved with. Wow. I'm um, telling some friends who's going to be speaking with you and my buddies like, oh, tattoos, uh, you know, just just great stuff off the, off the, off your solo stuff. But um, you know what? This is the way I'm going to be doing my interviews um, when I when my website goes up. I'm really relaxed. So, um, I mean, it's not going to be a standard professional thing. It's going to be more of a friend talking to a friend. So I know I you understood. have something going on at two. So all you have to do is just put this up like this when you got a minute or two left, and then we'll just segue out. And I don't mind us going on the on the uh, uh, to publish this like this. I think this is going to be unique. So um, just let me know. And we can do part two, you know, if we got to wrap it up. I've done that a few times where, where we didn't yeah. cover stuff and someone said, hey, do you mind if you come back next week? But, you know, it's interesting that you brought up uh, the solo record, but with no tattoos and license to love. Um, we're basically hit the 25th anniversary of that one. And, and, and I'm pretty proud of that one. You know, had two Jun Juno nominations yes. and won a Juno award for it. Right. But yeah. um but I spoke with Tom Barry, who ran Alert Records, still does. And I said, listen, what do you think about working together? I've got, um, I've found some old demos. I've found some live recordings of those songs. And, and um, when we were recording the record, uh, there was two or three tracks that I didn't put on. So we're talking about doing an anniversary reissue of that. And I have my fingers crossed that we might be able to get that out this year. And, and it would have some rarities on it and basically celebrating yeah. the 25th anniversary of that record. Very nice, very nice. I'm sure uh, all your fans are gonna are just gonna be chomping at the bit waiting for that. Um, before I get into, my, I'm just gonna ask a couple of quick questions. How did you get involved with Chicago Blackhawks so much? And you were recently <laughs> interviewed by Knack, and they're a Chicago-based uh, uh, website or um, a news organization. What is your Chicago affiliation? 
Okay, so growing up uh, with four boys in our family, we all played hockey. My older brother loved the Leafs, and I was like, "There's no way I'm going to like a team that my over, older brother likes." I, I ah. loved the I loved the logo of Chicago. I lived in Mississauga, and, and we had minor hockey teams with the Hawk logo on them. Yeah. So I kind of gravitated towards the logo. But at that time, that I really connected with the Hawks, Tony Esposito. Yes, um, from the Sioux. Uh, from the Sioux, right? Yep. Uh, Bobby, Bobby Hull, Stan Makita, um, you, you know, Pat Stapleton. All, I loved yeah. all of those players, right? You're Asian, my kid, man. yeah, my kid, my kid brother loved the Boston Bruins. So I never stopped liking the team. I, I yeah. stuck with them all the way. And then eventually, in a very, very strange, here's what I'll tell you it, it actually goes back to the, the No Tattoos record. And I had the fine folks at Labatt's working with me and they they actually gave us quite a bit of tour support and kept us on the road and, and gave us a lot of free beer, but we had to wear Labatt's t-shirts and bags and stuff, right? Yeah. And, and I was cool with that. Anyway, one of the guys from Labatt's invites me to a game at uh, Maple Leaf Garden, Chicago and Toronto. And he says to me after the game, do you want to go for a couple of drinks with some friends of mine? Didn't tell me who it was. Uh, we, we go around the corner and go into this room and the entire Chicago Blackhawks team is there. Larmer, uh, Danny Savard, Eddie Belfour, um, yeah. you know, Wilson, Doug Wilson. And Doug Wilson comes over and gives me the signed photographs. It says to the world's biggest Chicago Blackhawks fan. And I just hung out with the Blackhawks the whole night. Wow. Where, it got, where it got really cool is Mike Stapleton who is Pat's yeah. son came over and just said, Andy, I love your, I love the no tattoos record. Gives me his phone number. We kept in touch. I end up meeting a bunch of people who work for the Blackhawks, still stay in touch with Mike Gapsky, the trainer. Nice. Um, so, so this, it's been a big, long love affair with the Hawks. There's quite a interesting way how things come full circle. Mike Stapleton coached our Sioux Greyhounds here for a couple of years. Awesome guy. And um, one of the stories that I'll tell you is that he and he he cut a deal with me and they're from Strathroy, Ontario. Mm -hmm. He said he said, Andy, would you come and jam with me and my brothers? We have we've got some gear in our barn. We've got amplifiers, all this stuff. You just need to bring a bass guitar. So wow. I said, Mike, I said, Mike, I'll make a deal with you. I will, I'll come over and do that, but you need to take me to the local rink and give me some pointers. And, uh -huh. and, and so, uh, so I drove up to Strathroy, I jammed with him and his brothers, and then we went over to the local rink where his, his younger brother, Chris, plays goalie, and yeah. we, sh we just peppered him with pucks for about an hour on the ice together. That was awesome. Uh -oh. yeah. do, you still, do you still play pickup hockey or anything? I do. I, um, before the pandemic, I was playing three times a week. So I haven't, oh. I, I love it. I haven't stopped playing. I mean, it's just like, it's just beer league with some pals, right? So yeah. good yeah. exercise and it's a good way to get out. You know what I mean? I, I, I did that for a while too, but yeah, no, that's, that's just great. So the big news, and uh, we might have to go to uh, part two, but I, I, I love this conversation, the way it's flowing. Um, what's envy of none? that people don't know, and they're going to know pretty darn soon. It's it, Cat's out of the bag in the, <laughs> in the industry, but I think a lot of fans of Coney Hatch and Rush are going to be stoked when they hear what's coming out. Well, Ernest, it's a bit of a pinch me moment for me because um, it's like I've known the boys in Rush and worked with them, but I never really crossed the line. Like when I, you know, obviously when I met them back in, in the early 80s when we were label mates, yeah. um, I played a lot of tennis with, with Getty and Alex and then ended up playing a lot of golf with uh, Alex. And we became very good friends. And then on the Roll the Bones tour, um, my band... Um, you know, that uh, I call it the no tattoos lineup. We we ended up doing a bunch of dates with Rush on, on the uh, Roll the Bones tour. So yeah. we've always been very, very close and good friends. And out of the blue, Alex asked me to play bass on a couple tracks that he was um, working on at home. And I jokingly said to him, why don't you know any other bass players? Uh, like, I think, yeah, don't you know some guy whose initials are GL? And he said, no, I do, but I wanna, I wanna ask you to play on this. Anyway, yeah. one thing one thing led to another, and I mentioned to him that I'd been working with this young female vocalist uh, uh, by the name of Maya Wynn and um, yeah. working on some material. He said, hey, man, I would love to hear that stuff. Is there any way 
uh, you can send it to me. And I sent it to him and he said, wow, it sounds really cool. I said, would you mind adding some guitars on it if you hear anything? And it just steamrolled. It turned out from one to three to five to 10 tracks now. And Alex is really, really proud of the stuff as am I. And the, it's, it's a side project for him uh, mm. and for me as well. But the, but the working uh, title of it is Envy of None. And we're talking to some labels right now and it's gonna see the light of day. We're gonna, we're gonna get this yeah, thing out this year. Names like you, you two, and and the new um, the new talent coming in, yeah, the label will pick you up easily. So yeah, we're looking forward to that for sure. I think you guys have ten tracks done. We do. We've got ten tracks, and we're kind of at the stage now where we're talking to different people to mix and master it. And um, uh, our goal is to try to get it out sometime this year. And um, we're having a couple good conversations with some labels, but. Uh, um, I have to tell you, it started out very casually with Alex just saying, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll add some guitar to it. To now he's the driving guy. He's emailing me, calling me, going, when are we going to yeah. get this stuff out? Right. So I it's a that. really, and, and man, I used to go see Rush at Maple Leaf Gardens and, and Massey Hall. Like, like I, I actually can't believe this is happening to me, but it is. <laughs> well, full circle, I'm pretty sure that they've went out and seen you guys in Coney Hatch. Um, you maybe not even known it but speaking of coney hatch i know you guys got together last year with uh i think darby mills uh was uh in the circle of the shows you're doing i think you did some shows up in ottawa um sean uh, kelly was playing with you um are you is that correct yeah sean kelly um sean kelly has has joined the hatch for as the uh, new lead guitarist and we did a bunch of shows with british lions steve harris that's right um yeah that's so right. uh, so we did make it out to Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec City, Toronto. I think we did Kitchener as well. Um, and Steve, ironically, Steve Harris called me over the weekend to ask whether we would be interested in doing some shows in Western Canada and Europe with them for next year. So we're, uh, we're, we definitely have those are, um, on board and hopefully we can get back out on the road next year. Oh, geez. When you talk to Steve, let him know I'm looking for him. <laughs> Trying to get a hold of that guy for so long. You um, got it, Ernest, for sure. <laughs> I think uh, the, the Darby Mills thing was uh, incorrect. I think that was when they did some shows with the Killer Dwarfs. So yes, I yes, yeah. But, no, uh, you're yeah. right. Speaking of the Dwarfs, uh, I'm speaking with Daryl Miller pretty soon. He's released a second book. But um, any plans for Coney Hatch to do any shows? Like it looks like um, we're seeing uh, you know the doors opening a bit wider here in Ontario. Um, and delight of day. Are you guys uh, talking at all um, in regards to maybe doing some shows? This maybe well, I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what'll happen this year, but uh, we had some shows uh, in Europe that were were rescheduled for next year. So we're supposed to we're supposed to get to Germany next year um, as a, as a makeup date, and we had a couple shows with Kim Mitchell in Buffalo and and surrounding areas. So hopefully. I don't know if we're going to do anything this year, but definitely um, next year looks like a real strong possibility. Perfect. Okay, well, I know you've got something at two, my, my friend. It was great speaking with you. Um, I will uh, get a hold of you and uh, we can uh, do part two, uh, maybe after um, Envy is uh, signed and labeled and, and released. Yeah, I'd love that, man. And and uh, thank you for the rapid fire. I know we were working through this quick to get me off uh, for my other call, but oh no, um, that's all fair, man. It's all good. I really, I really appreciate you having me on, bro. And uh, sorry for the mix-ups on the earlier call, but um, hello good. to. Hello to everybody out there, and especially in the Sioux. Um, yeah. My one funny story I'll, I'll tell you is oh, yeah. when we were playing, I can't remember the name of the, there's a club there that everybody played at. You might remember. Um, the East Gate. East Gate. So yeah. I don't know why. I think we had a, a like a Wednesday or a Thursday night off. So we went across the bridge and we partied in Sault Ste. Marie, <laughs> Michigan. Yeah. Um, the back and, door. Yeah. And I do not remember coming home okay oh, I was oh. so out of my mind and uh, I woke up in my hotel room uh, floor in the bathroom in the fetal position and not remembered how I got there um, but let me tell you we had an awesome time at the back door <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, everything there is free pour they don't even I mean they they're, they're, they're looking at they're, they're holding their baby in one arm breastfeeding and then they're pouring your drink so it's all uh, over there it's uh, it's insane there's a lot of the stories that you just told and that, that's a very funny one man yeah i don't even like i don't know how i got across the border with that with uh, without somebody asking me but i apparently was ko'd so uh. yeah they're saying uh, <laughs> any, uh you've been driving to the, drinking to the driver no your friends are they dead or just passed out passed yes. out yes yeah 
<laughs> okay, man. But, we'll stay, all right, buddy. Well, right. well, cheers. Thank you so much. You no take problem. care and happy we'll to do part two. Okay. Okay, thanks, Andy. Ciao, bud. Bye. Ciao. Bye.